I grew up in New Jersey. It's not a place exactly known for its dinosaurs. So in 2009, I decided I had to go where the fossils were. I made my first trip out west, and one of the first stops I made was to this place, Dinosaur National Monument in the northeast corner of Utah, right on the Colorado border. And I immediately fell in love with it. I mean, it's a place where the geology is just eye-popping. There's fossils everywhere. And for me, to get in touch with the prehistoric past, to get a better understanding of what life was actually like during the time that those dinosaurs I love so much were actually around, there's really no better place to start digging into those mysteries. I've been to a lot of fossil sites, but I think this one has to be my favorite. This is the Carnegie Quarry at Dinosaur National Monument on the Utah-Colorado border. It's a Jurassic bone bed that's just rife with some of the biggest Jurassic celebrities that you've probably ever heard of. I mean, in this wall, we've got Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Ceratosaurus, Allosaurus, Stegosaurus, the list goes on and on. But the question was, how did all these dinosaurs get here? I mean, they didn't just appear. Well, it might have been something as simple as the Jurassic climate. Now, back during the late Jurassic, this place was much like Utah today, where there is a protracted dry season and a wet season. During the dry season, it could get so arid that sometimes there just wasn't enough water for the dinosaurs to drink. They'd die in the drought, and they'd sit on the surface sort of desiccating for a while. But when the rains came back, they started to wash all those dead dinosaurs together. And some of these dinosaurs were so big that they created these little eddies and streams around their bodies that helped create this collection of bones come together. So really, just the quirks of the Jurassic climate and the size of some of these dinosaurs help create this amazing collection of bones. Now, when you look at a dinosaur, you might not see much in common with them. They don't seem like a particularly close relative. But the fact is that we're actually distant cousins. We are both descendants of animals, these little fishapod things that crawled out of the swamps over 300 million years ago. Tetrapods, that means we inherited the same vertebrate body plan. Now look at this bone here. It's almost as big as I am, about five foot ten to give you a sense of scale. But this is just one leg bone from a giant sauropod dinosaur. This is a femur. Now if you look at that same bone on me, that's going about here. This is almost as big as I am. Can you imagine the immense scale of so many of these animals walking these ancient floodplains 150 million years ago? It's just absolutely fantastic.